Today's episode of Entertainment Drive Thru is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com has over 180,000 audiobooks and audio products. Get your free audiobook of your choice at audibletrial.com slash eDriveThru. Welcome to Entertainment Drive Thru. Today's special is Debbie Thurberry, legendary voice actress. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello, hello, welcome to Entertainment Drive Thru. I'm Anna, with me is my co host Dan, and today we have a legendary voice actress. You may know her as the voice of Jimmy Neutron. Let's welcome the one, the only, Debbie Derriberry! Yeah! Welcome to the show! Thank you, Dan and Anna! (laughs) By the way, with a name like that, how can you not be a voice actress? Derriberry. Right? (laughs) <laughs> I had no choice. Yes. And I, I feel like it's just even more awesome that you have an adorable voice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Ben and Jerry should make a yogurt or ice cream flavor and call it Debbie Dairy Berry Delight. <laughs> or, or it could be Cherry Dairy Berry. Ooh. Yes, please. That is even better. <laughs> Cherry Dairy Berry. I right? like it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, how are you? I'm great. I'm in Los Angeles. It's a little hot right now. I just got back from an on-camera audition. Oh. And uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's been crazy. I had 14 auditions last night. Wow. And uh, it's very crazy and wonderful and busy. And I believe a happy birthday is in order. Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so nice of you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a day. Yeah. Now I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask you know about the start here. I wanted to ask when like how did you get started as a voice actress? You know, it's it's the normal story. It's what happens to everybody. I was a pre med at college, oh. liking con- country music on the side and uh, singing and writing songs. Mm-hmm. And I decided not to go to medical school, but I decided to move to Nashville, where I ended up doing jingles in a children's voice. Jingles are the singing things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I never got hired for a grown-up voice. And then I did stand-in work because I'm like the same size as a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> and one of the moms said, hey, Debbie, you should do cartoon voices. Mm-hmm. And I it didn't even know it was a way of making a living. I've right. always right. acted. And so I moved back to Los Angeles and signed with a voice agent and started working right away. Wow. So it's what everybody does, you know? Right. I was going to say, that was that was the exact same answer that Jim Cummings gave yeah, us. Yeah, it was like, yeah. pretty mad, uh, you of know, course. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, because you talk about how you got into it, you know, it was it's someone who gave you the idea. But when is that moment that you realize that, you know, being a voice actress is what you were meant to do? You know, it wasn't going to be opening up a shop for scientists called Jimmy's Neutrons. <laughs> you wanted to be a voice actress. I actually, I wanted to be a singer okay. and I, I didn't know. I really didn't know. It wasn't until they started, you know, calling me into this voice agency for my auditions. And I, it was easy because they, they wanted me to talk like a little kid, which <laughs> that's what I do. Right. <laughs> I know one ever would take me seriously in med school. Like I'm going to take out your appendix now. She'd be like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Although, although you would be an epically awesome children's doctor. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yes, I would. (laughs) But that did happen. But I didn't, it wasn't, it just kind of was gradual, you guys. And I like, I got these cartoon series one Mm -hmm. after another. And I kept getting hired to talk like a little kid, which was just me. (laughs) And uh, I think the singing helps so much in voiceover because you're able to hear direction and you're able to hear meter and pitch and pacing Mm -hmm. and um you know it's been god it's been 25 30 years it's been a long time i've been doing it and the business has changed tremendously now i can look back and say oh yeah this must be what i was always cut out for and meant to do because i get hired for it which must mean i'm good at it (laughs) but i know 
I love it. I mean, there's a lot of things people love and maybe they're not so good at it right. or maybe they're not going to get hired for it. But I, I think I got really lucky in that all these things aligned themselves and there I was. And then I got to meet my best friend in the world at the same agency as me. Oh. And we've been tight ever since. Nice. Uh, have you know E.G. Daly? Oh, yeah. Um, she's my very bestie. And oh. I met her at the same agency. But, you know, we just... Uh, we're all in this together, me and Tara Strong and, yep. and E.G. And, and, you know, Pammy and everybody. It's just this nice, tight-knit Cree Summer and or Franks and Greg Griffin. It's just a bunch of us that just yeah. do this and we just love each other. Well, and I like that you I love that you brought up the singing aspect of it because, you know, I, I was watching. I remember in uh, I Know That Voice, there was a moment where uh, Jess Harnell, who was another legendary voice actor, he was making a really, really awesome point about this. He I, I don't remember exactly what the line was. I think it was, hey, man, you don't understand. And he was saying, if you're a singer, you pick up on the fact that that's da 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 da. And uh -huh. it's, it is such a great point because, you know, I mean, like. You know, people think that, you know, have being able to sing is just important to being a singer. But there's a lot of aspects in acting that make it so great if you're a singer. It's so, so true, because if you get direction and they want you to say, hey, man, you don't understand. And you say, hey, man, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Right. Completely different. And if you can't follow direction, then you're not going to be like, you know, the kind of voice artists are going to have back again and again. Exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's true. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that big helicopter. We're in <laughs> rush hour here in Los Angeles. And it's, right. it's, it's okay. We lived in Hollywood for a long enough time. We're used to helicopters at the weirdest <laughs> hour. So we're like, uh, yeah. like you'll, so, hear, you'll hear a helicopter at like one in the afternoon mm -hmm. and then at four in the morning. <laughs> Right. You know when there's a tie-up on the freeway because all the news helicopters want to come have a look. Right. I just want to have a look. And so they mess up my sessions all the time. Aww. Even in, like, professional studios. I live right in the heart of where I, like, I'm five minutes from all the recording studios, the big animation studios. Nice. And when you're in those rooms... Even the helicopters and airplanes can cut through if they're close enough. There's just oh, no yeah. way of getting rid of it. You just have to wait. Airplane break. Nice. <laughs> right. And I have to I have to ask a question because I was looking up on your IMDB page with, you know, a lot of the projects that you worked on. And there are two that actually made me really, really intrigued. Did you <laughs> actually do stunt work? You know, I um I was a gymnast for a very long time, 12, 13 years, mm -hmm. and I, I have been scuba diving, advanced scuba diving for ah. about 30 years, and mm -hmm. when this job came up to uh, body double, which I had body doubled 12-year-old boys before, as I told you, <laughs> most of my on-camera work has been body doubling or being little boys on camera, so they needed a body <laughs> double who was the size of a 12-year-old who could scuba dive to work, uh, to do the boys stunt work on free willing mm -hmm. right the whale so you know they scoured the nation and all they got were these burly short men <laughs> they needed a tiny scuba diver who wasn't a who was a great swimmer who wasn't afraid of the water who mm -hmm. was an actress blah blah long story short they sewed hair on my head because i have very <laughs> short hair and he had long hair and they flew me down to mexico city and i spent seven weeks on the back of that whale wow. this, was, this was way before um Blackfish and way before I was an animal rights advocate because today I would never have taken that job I just want to say here and now so people yeah. don't think that I mean I do not agree with mammals whales in captivity or mm. any animals actually right mm -hmm. my dogs who are locked in a house right now <laughs> <laughs> so it was an amazing job as a 12 year old boy and I don't normally do stunt work mm -hmm. but they did need me to do more than just drowning I right. did actually have to run on the pool deck, fall, hit my head, fall in, and submerge. Wow. Because the stunt woman they hired for that trick mm. wasn't as used to the whale in the water as me. And maybe it's hard to go completely still and relax in a whale tank <laughs> if you haven't done it for a few weeks already. Right. They, they brought her into their L.A. and they're like, go ahead, 
you just jump in the whale tank, pretend you're <laughs> unconscious and sink. And she's like, I don't think so. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But at least it's whales, not sharks, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it they they are a... No, that's a dolphin. Okay. Yeah. What I was, when you um, watch the boy drowning in that movie, Free Willy, I know it's an old movie, but if you pause it when he's drowning, he totally has hips. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny is I am going to I, like after this interview I am going to watch that movie just so I can see that one part and it's such a bad part to laugh at but I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was fun and then I did this whole other like uh, two years worth of commercials I don't know if you remember those Duracell battery commercials with the people in plastic the Puttermans okay. they looked like they looked like animated people, but they were, it was all us in costume. <laughs> and it was, I was the little boy. And uh, do you want to know Constant Zimmer from uh, House of Cards? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, she played my sister. And, you know, we had five hours of makeup and did the, I played this 12 year old boy. And Barry Sonnenfeld, the director, he was like, can you play a little boy believably? And I'm like, yep, guess <laughs> what? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I, it's it's been a wonderful career playing little boys, girls, <laughs> off camera, off, you know, sh dogs, cats. Aliens. Exactly. Aliens. What do you think you do? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break to listen to a clip from I'm a Chameleon by Debbie Derryberry. But we will be right back. favorite part so far oh i've had a few really favorite ones i of course i love jimmy neutron yeah. that right. was too much fun i really liked i did this series with howie mandel called bobby's world yeah and uh i played his uh his little girlfriend jackie with the long pigtails <laughs> she was like the voice of reason oh that was super super fun um <laughs> I, I love them all so much. I like Weenie in, uh, yeah. in uh, Oswald the Octopus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say, when I, I, I also sing to preschoolers. I have like three award-winning preschool CD albums Aww. out. And um, I was in concert all over the United States at all the Barnes & Nobles with my kids' music. And I, you know, they'd be like, and this is Debbie. She was Jimmy Neutron. i I'd go up and I'd say yes, and one time I made a really bad mistake. I uh -oh. don't know how old your audience is, but I would be like, yeah, and also on Oswald, I bark for Weenie. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. That was the name of my character, and then I stopped and I went, wait a minute. That is not what I meant to say. I bark for the dog on the show whose name is Weenie. <laughs> That is that is awesome. Well, and I I have to ask actually because we did like I, I brought up the fact that you did also play aliens. I have to know how many times did you have to say the claw for Toy Story? The claw, pick me. Um, you know, it was probably there was like thirteen of us in the room that day, and it probably was just like four or five minutes worth of us watching that scene. <laughs> saying whatever it was we said and when you're looping a film when you're doing these additional voices on on films you never know what is going to get kept and what's going to become famous and what's not you know right. like uh, on wreck it ralph that was so much fun doing all those people in the apartments and mm -hmm. the, the candy canes and the grandstands but you know doing all these pixar films you never know what's going to hit and what's going to stick and you know, 10 years later, here are people bringing me T-shirts at conventions Aww. for the meet meeps And like, and say it, say it, the club, the club, be me. <laughs> it was just fun. It was me and Danny Mann and a few other people just, you know, playing these little funky little 
Guys in a gumball machine. Okay, <laughs> I'm confused because you did the, the in the first Toy Story. Who did it? Did you know who did it? Did you do it for the Toy Story 3 or was that another person who did the the epic claw that saves them? I was having a heart attack there. I was <laughs> like, they're not going to kill them. And then the claw. I was like, yes. No, that one wasn't me. I don't know who that was. Oh. I don't know who knows. I was in the first movie yes. and the second one yes. when they're in the gumball machine and they mm. see it coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's me. Okay. And uh, I'm in so many of the, the early Pixar films. But, you know, it's it's one day that you're in there all day and you do different scenes all day. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to, hard to remember. I right. totally get that. No, I was wondering about that because the claw is just, it's such an epic line. What I, I actually have to ask, because, I mean, obviously you have a great start for this, but, you know, when it comes to creating a character's voice, you know, like the aliens or like Jimmy Neutron, how do you go about deciding how the voice should be, uh, like, for the specific character? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I actually am writing a book, uh, and it, it sh- I think it's... See, I know we're recording this a few days early, but it should be out by the time this is out. Okay. And uh, people can go on my website, debbiederryberry.com, and see the book. And I have a whole section on creating characters. Nice. And uh, generally what I do is I I look at all the parameters and I start layering the character. You know, where do I think that voice is placed? Is it up here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Uh-huh. Where's the placement? And then, you know, I always, my example is if if it's a teenage girl, that's kind of about right here. Mm. And what if she, um, what if she has braces? So all mm-hmm. of a sudden, then you have a teenage girl with braces. And then what if, wait, what if she's from the South? Okay, so what if she's from the South? <laughs> from Texas or Tennessee, and then say maybe she's not so nice, so maybe she's mean on top of that. <laughs> so you just, like, put all these layers together to kind of create what you what you want and see how it works. I feel like we, we just, this is one of those moments I wish we had, like, a, a live studio audience just for, the, like, the, the yeah. big loud applause for that. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank it's you. like it's like when uh, I think it's uh, Kath Susie who who like goes through like the different age groups when she's explaining like like how big like the equipment is for like you know little girls to you know bigger girls and all that stuff. And I have to I have to ask though because you you kind of went through a little bit of this, uh, and this is actually a a first time question on the show. I just thought of this now. I can't believe I'm just now thinking of it. What is your opinion on stereotypes when it comes to creating the the characters? Uh, you know because I. Obviously, you know, with the with the southern voice, you know, people tend to go toward the same directions for for these or when they like when in another I know that voice uh, reference, John DiMaggio was talking about like, you know, more of a dumb character and it was a, it was kind of a stereotype for it. What's your mm-hmm. opinion on that? You know, I it, it, whether I have an opinion or not mm-hmm. is to me, it's like almost immaterial because it's what works and what's what gets booked and what people expect to hear. Right. And right. and so there is the the go to voice mm-hmm. if the director says we want him to be more stupid. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you go a little deeper and a little slower. Um, oh, my son just emailed me. I just finished my video. I worked really hard. It's my, it's my best video yet. The Greens, he has a YouTube channel. So you, I'm going to send you his link so you can post it and everybody can subscribe to my son's YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yay. Yeah, this, um, is, this so, is that moment where I go, you can check it out now on entertainmentdrive.com. We will have the link. <laughs> I have to figure out how to do that. I'm so not Skypey good. But the... Um, the flip side of that stereotype is that you can create other voices, like for your audition, you would kind of create what they'd expect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like I just auditioned for a giraffe who was really into yoga and really like um, mellow, mm-hmm. so right. like, you know, very hippie style giraffe. <laughs> but what if in my back pocket, what if my take two? What if my take two sounded something like this? Uh. You know, something you weren't expecting, like mm. Stewie Griffin. Nice. <laughs> right. You know, who would expect that? Or the sister in Bob's Burger. Mm. Who right. would expect that? So it's fun to break the stereotypes. It takes the listener 
away from the the uh, I think the whole point of the cartoon. It takes and and it distracts the listener, which isn't always good. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have a voice that flows seamlessly into the animation and moves the story along without taking the listener out of the story. Right. Yeah. But it's but it's sometimes fun to do it like with Stewie and you just grow to love this little guy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So stereotypes are, are they're not bad. I mean, it, they're what they are. Like they serve uh, its all, purpose. All the promo voices you hear, not all of them, but you know when you look at, at John Bailey or whatever the, the voice of uh, real honest trailers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The type of voice you expect to hear in a I know that voice or you know a, a Don LaFontaine type voice. The yeah. promo voices are generally male voices. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the human ear associates that with trustworthiness, um, knowledgeable, um, these certain things that go along with that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If you, if you had a little kid saying, uh, stay tuned for 60 minutes coming up next. (laughs) (laughs) Like it just doesn't jive, you know? I love that you point that out because in one of the the stand up that that an Icelander had, they were like, "There's a reason why the captain starts speaking." And says like, "This is the captain speaking." Blah 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 blah, and not not like the steward is like, "Hello, this is the captain speaking." <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm laughing so hard though because now I want to take that clip of you say saying and you're listening to 60 minutes and actually put it on on like a 60 minutes video. <laughs> that would be funny. Do it. Put it on YouTube. Link me to it. Go to my channel. Oh, I'm definitely going to. But now I wanted to, I wanted to move on here. I wanted to ask though about challenges. What has been one of the biggest challenges for you as a voice actress? Um, I think recently, in the past uh, four to five years, the challenges have been twofold. One is that celebrity A-list mm-hmm. on-camera talent have taken all the feature roles, right. all, the, all the principal roles. So there, there are no more principal roles available, pretty much, mm-hmm. for us rank-and-file voice actors. So that is one problem because there's less jobs Mm -hmm. yeah and the second uh problem or issue is that because everybody can record from their house and audition from you know i could i could go move to timbuktu and audition just the same there so my competition pool has grown from hollywood to the world Mm -hmm. so whereas i may have competed with you know, 20 to 300 people for a job. Now I'm competing with, you know, 2,000 to 10,000 people for a job. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's the thing is, you know, I mean, like ever since technology has gotten to this point where everyone is able to do stuff, I feel like there's been that, like that huge debate as to has technology is technology to blame for, you know, the, for, you know, crappy music. Is it to, to blame for, you know, like actors that you don't think should have gotten the role, getting the role. And I'm not going to lie. I think the one thing that has actually made a huge, huge effect, if not the biggest effect on everything in the entertainment industry is the sheer numbers of people that are able to get out there. I mean, it's, I think it's wonderful. I think it's great that everyone has that opportunity, but at the same time, it's a huge, huge, uh, you know, disadvantage for everyone because there's so many people trying to do it and it's it's making it harder for everyone yeah but there is the fact that remains that the cream of the crop does still rise to the top Mm -hmm. the cream still rises to the top um for example i was doing a um i was auditioning for a honda commercial at christmas Mm -hmm. okay and they wanted little Fisher Price characters. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so everybody in town auditioned. Who knows all over the world, but they auditioned. But at the actual session, who was there? Voice actors. Me, Tara, mm-hmm. Strong, Tom Kinney, SpongeBob, um, Mar- uh, J- um, James Arnold Taylor. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, the, the same people that do it all the time are the ones that were selected by this company that doesn't know a voice actor from an on-camera actor. Mm -hmm. But that just showed me that, yes, that there still is the skill level that it takes to compete, even though our competition pool is is huger. And on a good note, for people who, 
you know, aren't already established, if they're really good, there's an opportunity for people to come in. It's not a closed business. Oh, yeah. That's good. Well, the th- the th- one of the things I, that I, I love about talking to voice actors and listening to, to interviews with voice actors is, you know, this is something that it, it just astounds me. Uh, and it seems like it's almost specific to voice acting is, I mean, everyone seems to be so humble about competition. I mean, I, I've I've talked to voice actors that's that that will say, oh, whenever, you know, someone gets the job instead of me. I congratulate them. Like, it seems to be like, yeah. like, I think it was James Arnold Taylor that that was saying something like this is the only industry or like, it's the only part of the industry where someone will steal a role from you that you've had for decades. Mm-hmm. And then instead of getting mad, you'll say, you know what? Congratulations. If there's any way I can help you develop this character mm-hmm. to be the best it can be, let me know. I'd be yeah, happy yeah. to help. No, James is too nice. I would have punched him in the face. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think that voice actors are very humble. Mm -hmm. One reason is because you're so easily replaceable. Really, there are are probably people out there who can talk like Debbie Derryberry. Mm -hmm. I bet you there are. Or people who think they can anyway. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, when I hear an audition, when I see an audition come through, or I hear a, a voice sample and they want to sound alike Mm -hmm. i sure i want the job but if i know who could do a better job i will put them in touch Mm -hmm. right what here's this job guess what it is so up your alley i do that like almost every day i form auditions to people that i'm like this has your name all over it and i feel like that would never happen in on-camera auditions (laughs) no it wouldn't it really wouldn't different beast that's Mm -hmm. that's just it's different right right yeah these actors are very we remain humble Mm -hmm. right well and that's one of the reasons we love talking to you yes and speaking but speaking of being humble and things that are challenging we actually have a new challenge for you today what's that because we are up to our segment the question of the day today's episode of entertainment drive-thru is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com is offering listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash edrivethru and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's just that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash edrivethru. That's audibletrial.com slash edrivethru and get started today. So you get, you actually get a special challenge today. And I just, I just thought of this like a half a second ago and Anna watched me get like all excited because I had a great idea for this. So, for, but, but before we get there. This month, we are continuing continuing what we were doing last month, which is asking some of our original questions of the week and trying to get new answers because we love these questions. So your question, and you have a, you have a special way of doing this, instead of coming up with a funny answer, I want you to come up with the most adorable answer <gasps> in the most adorable voice that you can think of. The question is, sweet dreams are made of what? Sweet dreams are made of puffy, puffy cotton candy and clouds, and they're made of chocolate milk and cookies that my mom baked. <laughs> and um, my puppy dog licking my face all over my face. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> Yes! That, I am so glad I thought of that. My God, you should have seen like Dan's face. He lit all up. It was so like, yeah. awesome. You know those moments where you have like that thought of like, we should totally make an alien and have them go, the claw. That was that moment. <laughs> also, it's not just that. When I heard you talk like that, it's just like, think of a ba- you had a really bad day but then you hear this voice and it just brings a smile to your face doesn't matter how crappy of a day it is I, that's what I think is like a good voice well, it's, it's like you know what I'm gonna do is, is so I'm taking that one clip and I'm putting it over 60 minutes <laughs> now I'm gonna take this one and I'm actually going to play a little bit of 60 minutes and then have it say 
We will be right back after these messages. Sweet <laughs> dreams are made of. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You Ooh. must send it to me and tag me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. absolutely. Dan, can it be like with like Donald Trump just muted and then just oh, yeah. sweet dreams are made <laughs> yeah. up? We'll just have, yeah, yeah, we'll have we'll have Donald Trump like on video, but your voice over him. So everyone will be like, not as bad. Not as bad. <laughs> okay. Now it's okay. <laughs> But anyway, well, getting back to our interview now that we've had off fun, but I now I wanted to ask, and actually, this is this is fun. We get to get uh, hopefully two voices in a row here. But actually, in the voice of Jimmy Neutron, I would like to ask for your favorite bit of advice that you would recommend to people just getting started. Alrighty, thinking, 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 <laughs> brain blast. Okay. <laughs> The best bit of information I have for people getting started in voiceover is that you should definitely take lots of acting classes and other classes and be a technological wizard so you can set up your computer system at home and record. Oh, uh, that's about all. Goddard, quit pooping aluminum cans. My dad's calling. Got a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is that was awesome. We have to put like tons of <laughs> applauses in her interview. You do I like, and that. I, I like how it makes it, like every time I we interview a voice actor and I ask them to do to do this part in a in a voice, it always makes it so much better of advice. Mm -hmm. But I think that but getting to that actual advice, I think that's really good. And I like the idea of of like recording a lot of stuff because I mean one thing about voice acting is I mean you can recite stuff over and over again. But you don't necessarily hear how you actually sound, and, and it's sound good to hear it recorded. So different, my God! And I can imagine it's you know that as a, I mean you know that as a voice actress, but you also know that as a singer, you sing something and then you hear yourself and you're like, "That's my voice." <laughs> well, also the um, the business is done from home now. I audition everything except for just a very few jobs. Mm. I audition from my home studio. Oh, no. So you have yeah. to be really up on how to how to work it mm -hmm. and um, how to edit it and how to send it. And when is the best time to record when the airplanes aren't going over? <laughs> right, anyway, it's, right. it's uh, the business has changed and you have to be up to speed on your technology. I think half of the classes that I teach, I spend a great deal of time helping people uh, getting the software they need and the phone that they need, the, you know, the studio set up the mic it's, it's a whole other part of the business that you have to be good at now. And does that come in your book? Yes, it does. <laughs> Promo <Yes. a> moment. <laughs> I and have to I ask. Will, it will be um, ready. And hopefully um, people can go to my website, debbiederryberry.com. It's spelled D-E-B-I-D-E-R-R-Y-B-E-R-R-Y.com. They can follow me on Twitter at Debbie Derryberry. They can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Debbie Derryberry. And um, <laughs> my Vine, they can subscribe there too through the Twitter. <laughs> Well, I'm all over the place, dang it. <laughs> well, I, I, ha oh, I was actually going to ask, like, because you were talking, we were talking about recording. What, what equipment do you use, and what software do you use? Well, when I travel, and when I recommend to other people, I really like Twisted Wave. Mm -hmm. uh, Audacity is also good, mm -hmm. but okay. I'm, I use something called Sound Studio Two at home on my Mac, and my mic is a Rode microphone. But for people who are just, you know, starting out or have their home studio with their, they just need a USB, I think that the Blue Yeti is a great mic. Nice. I nice. think the Shure 42 is also a good mic. For travel purposes, I use an Apogee mm -hmm. just because it's so tiny. Um, yeah, I think yeah. all the mics are pretty good if you, if your voice tends to one, one end or the other. You know, if it's terribly deep or terribly high, you may find variations in the mics and one that works better for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're mid-range, all of these should work. It's also nice when you get going to have some sort of a, you know, a, a mix box, some kind of interface mm -hmm. where you can um, control your gain a little easier. Um, I prefer a external mouse as opposed to a, um, you know, the little finger pad. <laughs> Jennifer Hale's calling me. Oh. Okay, I'll have to send her a message. One second. <laughs> Sorry, can't talk right now. Okay, she'll call me back. <laughs> okay. Sorry. 
I had to send one to EG a second ago. I tell you, we are tight. We are tight. Right. Well, and, and actually, because because you know because we are in that digital world, you know, I, I wanted to ask actually about you know people recording their voices and sending them in. What is your opinion on on editing, like in terms of putting effects on it? Because I mean, there are voices that you know people do that it's it's almost like it shows off something that they can do if you edit it with like you know a little bit of like a distortion or something. Is that is that a good idea in any in any sense, or is it just a big no no? Don't ever do that. For auditions, it's a no no. Okay. Mm-hmm. For, uh, you know, if you are actually creating something for your particular event, well, then go to it. But right. yeah, for, for audition purposes, um, can't say that I've ever heard that that's a good thing. Because they right. want to hear you and what you can do, right? As opposed to what the computer can do. Yeah, they want to hear it before yeah. all the effects. Yeah, yeah. And usually it's just the, the audition files are just raw voice files. You don't. The only thing I edit out is, you know, my dog barking, my mm-hmm. myself sneezing, too many breaths, mm-hmm. little smacky noise here and there, little timing issues. But that's the only thing that we edit out. Do you then send it via like a we transfer, or do you just send it an email, like to make it small enough the file? I always, I'm always, conf- com- yeah, I always want to know. Audition files are generally sent as MP3 files. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they're not, you know, if it's going to be up on the air, then you'd send a wave or an AIFF or yeah. something. Yeah. Just for for the sake of uh, auditions, it's usually at 128 mm-hmm. KP, KPSB, whatever you call that, mm-hmm. kilobytes per KBPS, whatever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then 128 there and uh, MP3s. A lot of the smartphones sometimes send MP4 files, and mm-hmm. that's kind of a pain. So if you're auditioning off your phone, then um, you have to find the right recording program. I think I audition might have an MP3, and I know Twisted Wave might, okay. but so many of them send MP4 off the phone, and that's not great. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, unfortunately, we are getting down to the end of our interview. No. I know. But before we go, uh, well, I guess I guess she kind of already did this, but I guess just for a reminder, where are places that our listeners can find out more information about you and your book? You can come to my house. No. <laughs> I was going to say that's a dangerous thing to put on the air. Yeah. So, um, Which house? Th- Jimmy Neutron or somebody else's? Yeah, ah. Jimmy. Mm. I'm in Retroville, you know. <laughs> um, okay, here is where you can find it. Uh, it will be on my Facebook uh, Debbie Derryberry Voice Classes page. Mm-hmm. It'll be on the Debbie Derryberry fan page on Facebook. It'll be on my website at DebbieDerryberry.com. And there will be, of course, shout outs and links on the um, other social media with Twitter and, and Vine and whatever else I'm forgetting. Excellent. <laughs> How do you keep that up? I, will, uh, I have a hard <laughs> enough time just with like Facebook and Twitter. And I sometimes do the Instagram. I do that always later. And then with all the other stuff, I'm like, can't you just have one? Like it's, it's, ah. Uh. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You have to have, you have to have a team. Yeah. 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 I got people. (laughs) Lucky. Well, thank you so much, Debbie, for being on the show. It's really been a tremendous honor to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for me, too. Thank you for asking to have me on your show. And hi to all your wonderful listeners. And you guys are doing a great job. I'll talk to you soon. Thank Thank you. you. And and for more information on Debbie Derryberry and the podcast, go to entertainmentdrivethrough.com and subscribe on iTunes. Like and follow us on our Facebook at facebook.com slash entertainmentdrivethru and our Twitter and Instagram at eDriveThru. Hi, this is Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron, and you're listening to Entertainment 